So the infinity sign, um, I've been kind of like experiencing um, that a lot in my um, dreams and in my uh, meditation. And I said, oh, it's something to it. We're recording. Not yet. Okay. Um, Good evening. I, I'm trying to, because, see, here we go. Air pause, one more. Here we go. My video has stopped. I don't know what. Is okay, we want to just put everyone on mute so everybody can listen now. It says, please ask the host to give you a permission to record. Okay, let's record. Okay. okay. And we want to put everyone on mute. Okay. Okay. Let me go here. Um, all right. Infinity. Hmm what's happening here. Give me a minute. All right, so here we go. Um, the uh, infinity sign is what we're going to talk about tonight in respect to um, some of the energy that we have actually experienced, such as Gemini, very strong, Scorpio, um, and Sagittarius. Now, that doesn't have anything to do with the three of the signs that have been um, conjunct uh, moving together in a stellium, which is um, Capricorn, Pluto, and uh, Jupiter. So today is 1111. So when you add up 11 and 11, you come up with four. And then when you add up 2020, you come up with four. And in that, what you get is eight. And eight would be sitting up this way, but it corresponded after about three to four weeks of seeing it with the infinity sign that lays on its side. Um, I've drawn on my paper, but this is, um, for those that don't know what an infinity sign looks like, it's like it's kind of, it looks like an hourglass and um, it also looks like a number eight but it actually sits like this right um, can everybody see that yeah yeah so after um, seeing it like maybe three times in vision and dream um, I said it's something that is trying to commit communicate with me and then my son had on an infinity t-shirt that had the sign there infinity for us it says something like that anyway I did the video and um then I looked at my candy land game or whatever it is every now and then I, I play that and it had infinite 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 numbers of plays so I'm just a max you know I can play as much as I want to and so um, within that time, you know, I've been uh, teaching us about these shakeable moments that um, Uranus bring. And um, 
this sign has a lot to do with Uranus and the infinite aspect because it's always going to bring you back from the finite to the infinite. And finite means everything that is matter right now. And infinite means everything that is not finite. That means that it's spirit. It's abundance. There's no limits to it. So that could be love, happiness, joy, and peace and all. And I said, well, how does that match up with the energy? Because right now we have Scorpio. Um, we're in the month of, of Scorpio energy. And we just went out of Gemini retrograde. Um, and retrograde with Scorpio. Um, because my mind went back to the moons that we've experienced, which were Taurus and Aries and Libra. And these were the same moons that were affecting us in the time where the pandemic was becoming a little bit more familiar uh, back in April and May. There was a Taurus moon and an Aries moon back then. So here we are in May and there was a Scorpio moon that kicked off some really hardships for people. And everyone that's on here could go back and think about it. So I believe that if you synchronize as we did 11-11-2020 with um, that time, you may get something out of that time that could change this time moving forward because we're in a different time, although we're experiencing some of the energies that look similar. Um, back in 2020 of May, we may not have been standing up for ourselves, and we may have been. Some of this energy was bringing us to a place where we had to go deep with Scorpio, and that means deep into trauma and wounds of the past. It was taking us actually into the shadows or the murk of who we have been and what we have been living out. Some of it we didn't want to live out. Some of it we were going along with it because maybe we didn't know what to do. And um, we could have been afraid of doing anything different because we didn't know what to do different, which is not really sound wisdom according to our own souls. Any time that you're not doing what you truly want to do, and it, it, it's like a lie that you're living, okay? It doesn't matter how you shape it, form it, it's a lie. Even if you're doing it for other people, it's a lie because the passion of Christ was about passion. So he did what he did because he wanted to do it for people, right? And so I want to make a statement on why we do things, why we do it. And there could be a time in the season when we wake up and find that I, we don't want to do that anymore. And when I say wake up, I mean come into an understanding where there is a synchronicity. And the synchronicity is telling us that's the way you did it before, so don't do it again that way because it's not good for you. It could be good for everyone, but it may not be good for you. Now, this is not something that I am saying for people to become hostile in and begin to just dismantle their life and tell them that no one is good for you. You see, we're in a place where there's separation and divide, conquer, the conquerors and the conquerees. And what that means, is, is that yes, we have to be careful to know what playing field we're on because there is a division of the playing field. Um, Nyella said it a couple of weeks ago in a uh, class that we did and it was the wheat and the tares. So when you look at Gemini, Gemini is a polarity because I just explained what Scorpio does. No matter if it's nice or if it's not nice, Scorpio will sting, and, but it goes deep. And if you tell it that you want to push harder when it's telling you not to push, this isn't the time, you're going to get stung. Because if you're told it's not the right time, Scorpio is generally, is digging in this time and is trying to find things out. 
your information that you add to this energy may not be conducive and the way that you present your information. So this is something to think about because when you think about uh, Gemini, what's happening is you got communication. So you're going to communicate um, something that you may not have wanted to or maybe something that you did not mean to say or maybe just the way it was supposed to for your higher good. Someone may not be listening and you may have to go in another step further. And you do that because your higher good is telling you or prompting you to say, you know what, it doesn't matter. And what is it that doesn't matter to you? That's something that everyone has to figure out. So with the infinity symbol, what it does is bring you into a place where Sometimes you can't even control what you're doing because that finite aspect is over. Whatever that finite issue aspect is, is over. And your higher self is saying, or your God, your Jesus is saying, we're not doing it that way. So infinity steps in, just like in Ragnarok, where the big dude had all of the rings and he was simply... I mean, all of the stones, he was trying to get all of the stones because he was trying to change something. He looked like the villain, of course. And, you know, my thing is staying with the stones. He was trying to collect them all. And him collecting them all was causing chaos in the world. But, you know, sometimes chaos, in many cases, chaos is going to be for a common good because you can't have peace without war, right? So when we look at infinite, we look at the possibilities, but without the finite being broken or shattered, no possibilities can come because you're boxed in. You're boxed into doing things the same way you used to, even though the time is calling for us all to do things different, right? And if you're called to do di things different, even with the pandemic, I heard people saying, you know, that they didn't like the idea of being in the house. Well, guess what? If you had been raised up in the house, you would have been in the house with not a problem. And this is the adjustment in our mindsets that we have to make because everybody thinks that they're supposed to have what they want when they want. Uh, finite thinking would be that, but infinite thinking would grow beyond that and say, well, there's other possibilities that I need to look at. So with the symbol, in order to come into the symbol of an hourglass, and that's not saying that it's happening to us physically, but there's an inner work that causes this to happen, which says that there's a reshaping of your inner man. And that comes from, you know, your biblical understanding and you even working on yourself to say that I'm going to be a better person because if you were somebody that was begrudging the pandemic, who are you today? Make it simple, because you can't change nature. And what is to be is to be. If the pandemic happened because it was a natural cause to shift the environment of uh, the world, then the infinite has been put in a place and the, in, I mean, the finite have been put in a place is those things or people and beings that were restricted in doing things a certain way, finite, immovable, unshakable, and those over in the infinite that said it was okay that they do things a different way would be over there. And so what you have is a reshaping of realities. Something that many people don't look at. You may have had the finite for Mm, all of our life, right? All of our lives. We may have had just that O, that little shape right there, right? Can you see it? But now the universe is saying, no, I don't want half. I want it all. You see? Yeah. I want that whole eight. And I want it because the possibilities are great. So where did this symbol come from? And how do you know that it is possible? Because 
you can know it's possible because you already thought in the finite. You thought limitless. You thought that things could only work out the way that you thought. You thought that there was nowhere to work or no way to do work in a pandemic. You even thought you wouldn't survive in a pandemic having to stay at home, didn't you? But even today, people that thought like that are getting a better way of looking at things. Some have been depressed and some have committed, committed suicide, right? But a lot have adapted to this, which has opened up the mindset of people to know that there is another way beyond what they've seen and known. What society taught them. Hello? And what, what your leaders have taught them. And I say your leaders because they're yours, not mine, all right? So let's go and find out where all of this began because it didn't just begin. And that's the wonderful thing about it. When you go back to history, we have this picture and this picture, it shows you the sun and the moon. And we see it is over these two characters here, right? The sun, and the moon. And so you get a, br a brighter or a greater understanding of infinite because see now the sun isn't alone. Once you are looking at infinity or finite, you can see the sun, but you also see the moon and the infinite sign that collaborates them as one, yin, yang. They don't have to be together as we've seen in the picture yin and yang, but the infinity sign means that they are grasping off of one another, which means that there's a unity. Where there was one recognition of the sun, there is no more only for the sun. It is now recognition for the moon, which brings us to a place where we have not been historically trained or taught, not even from our forefathers, because we didn't know who they were. We're coming to know them because we are allowing ourselves to think differently, which gives us more than the finite, which is what you see. Every day you see the sun coming up. Most people do not go out and look at the moon, which could make it infinite, but finite because it's just invisible. The sun is attributed to man, the patriarch. The moon is attributed to the matriarch who has been invisible, who has been be, be in, the, in, the, in the backside. So if we could get this here possibility, because I know when people come on and they've not heard about the sun and the moon, they want to know, well, what is that going to do for me? It's going to do a lot for anybody that has not known what their sun and moon is. Why? Because your moon is actually your emotions. Like here, 1111, and today it is reflecting on my moon sign. And my moon sign is taking me deep, which is the feminine aspect. It's also telling me, let me just help. There's no more emotional bondage. There's a, a way that you can express yourself. And if sometimes people push the button where you got to express a little harder, then you just give them that, especially when you give them a pass. Because many times you have people that have been obliging others in the way that they live and how they do things very wholeheartedly. And it's not a secret. You've made it a secret, dear Mother Moon, that it was okay for them to be in the space that they were, but they didn't give you the okay. And what that means is, is that there's people that have been overlooked even under the moon because they've been overlooked under the moon, their emotions haven't been 
and dealt with, and they had emotional bondage. I'm going to turn this around again, and I'm going to say this here. Sometimes people have emotional bondage. It's just that they don't know how to express themselves. Then there's another way to look at this, because we're in a season of communication. There's some people that you deal with that don't want to listen. And when you get around people that do not want to listen, the moon can become used to that because she is a nurturer. She is accommodating, but she is coming out of the backyard. That's why the infinity sign is showing itself. Today, the infinity number comes up 1111 and 4 4. I mean, and 4. 11 11 as to 4. 2020 as to 4. That is 8. Infinite possibilities in love, in life, in health, in strength. Now, where did the infinity leave us? Okay. Between the sun and the moon, there was a production. But that is something that you will have to look at and play in the astrological aspect, right? You have to, because it's out of our grasp. It's in the, uh, the heavenly realms, but it's also within us. Whenever you see an infinity sign within yourself, there is a change within you that is drastically taking place. And many people do not understand that. A lot of us have hindered the infinite possibilities of our lives because we've held on to things that was finite. The finite that was not conducive for the season that we're coming into. Back in antiquity, what we see here is Isis, this is a drawing of Isis, and this is, um, what's his name? Her husband, Horus. Now, if you just look at this here, you can see where the, the um, snake is coiling up, more so conducive to the Kundalini. The snake is coming into a position of, of eight. It's wrapped the um, tails along the legs where we find infinity in many of the astrological signs, but as we look at this here, we just wanna kind of look at this picture and see what's happening. The sun and the moon coming together is even causing a balance between these two individuals. Isis and um, I think is uh, her husband, uh, what's his name? Um, Anyway, y'all know who I'm talking about. So when you look at the balance scale here, again, below the infinity sign, you can still see, again, there is an analogy of balance. You can't have balance in the sun without the moon being brought into perspective, which means that a lot of people had not seen the moon. So they couldn't know where the energy was coming from that they were dealing with on a emotional position, you know? And many others in other countries have always still, even if they were Christians, uh, been taught about the moon. Now in other countries, they've taken it away because I brought up where um, I was listening to um, Sanguru that he said this to his um, Indian followers over in his land. If we paid attention daily to how we felt under the moon when the full moons come in and even as the days are going out as it is um, going into um, Gibeous moons, the different moons, um, you would be able to understand how you feel, where you feel, and what you feel, right? And this is something for everyone to take on because once you start working with the moon, the sun has to come into equality with the moon. But it, if you're only working with the sun, then you won't have a balance or an equality because you have not produced anything under the moon. Now, how do you bring the moon perspective into play? Again, it's always gonna be meditation. 
no matter how you feel when you're doing it, your sun and moon will meet together and that's going to be in meditation and it's going to be within you. The balance of life is key. So even when you and I are doing something that is out of balance, relationships, professionally, we may not know better because we may have been in a season where we had to do that. We had to learn that thing. The key is knowing that you had to do it. The other thing is, did you want to do it? These are things that we have to find out for ourselves because without that, we have no balance. Some people are here studying and they still have no balance. This is not a negative. This is an understanding that as long as you are dealing with finite issues, the infinite can't really work for us. Now, someone might say, well, I just want to walk away from my home and my house today. Now, just hear what I'm saying. The burdens are too much. The burdens could be there because you probably, maybe you could have made that thought of walking away from it before and just stepped out on faith. Now that's just an example, right? Because when something gets too heavy, it's not that God is not there for us or the universe is not supporting us. We're in a process of understanding what's good for us and what's not good for us. Here you you still have, you know, one thought process over another. The infinite will step in when you say, I just can't and I let go. This is like forgiveness. I come into um, an understanding of forgiveness and infinite begins to work for me. So what gets you into the place of having less? It's lack. It's thinking that I have nothing when I have everything. Let me show you a picture of infinite. And the picture of finite is this here. Many of us have worked jobs in the last 10 years that's caused us nothing but problems, right? And we thought because we lost that position or whatever, just say for instance, an example, you think that because you lost that position, now you have nothing, but it's your thoughts that dictate the outcome. You haven't even reached within to see the value of who you are and what you really have the ability to produce. You didn't even work with people that actually can help you bring that production together. You worked with everyone that could kill you and the dreams that you have within. By night. When you wake up one morning and you find yourself in, I love, um, Groundhog Day, you know, and you start looking at yourself and you keep repeating the same picture or movie because you got to get it or the universe wants you to get it. Then you finally see because you're sick and tired of seeing that same in, that same finite drama. And that's where the change begins. Remember, because Change don't always start for us until we see it. However, change is already in motion because it was part of the process we agreed to coming into this world. It's like catching up with ourselves. Well, something new that we were supposed to come into a time where we let go of everything that was not conducive to the next level of our life. But there was something waiting on us to release it all and say, I'm here with the infinite. So the infinite means that you are coming into a balance. That means that you and I have to work at it. We balance our emotions across the board in our relationships, in our families. We balance. You know why? Because this is so important. It's so important. And, and I found this because even from Gemini, when I taught on Gemini and the North Node coming in, it was all about this here. And I said to myself, I bet nobody remembers. 
I may have brought up, I may not have brought up infinite, but I'll tell you what I brought up, Venus. Venus going into the underworld meant that she was going to have to go down to release some things and come back up. What do you think Venus was going to bring if anybody sat in that energy was balance. Now, if I say balance, then I come into infinite. Infinite means that there's a balance in your life and now the abundance can flow. There is not chaos. Chaos is when there's imbalance. That means that the sun has been working s-u-n in people's lives and no one thought about the moon who needed nurturing listen when someone calls and they don't care about how you feel and they only care about what they need emotional baggage may trickle over on them because you may have said this is not a good day for me but they wanted you to let them know, did you understand? And you said, listen, I don't care. We don't use excuses to let people have it. We just let them have it. Because you should understand how to communicate with people, especially people that's been there for you. Chaos will become a part of your life if you do not know what balance is. Now, that is not just for them, it's for us as well. Because if you do not value people in your life, you're going to get the sun and it's going to burn your ass up. The sun need a little bit of water, though, which is what the moon works with. And after the water is recognized, like tears and emotion, the crying that uh, the moon gives, the moon may cry, but will get tired because they have been there to nurture. They will give the balance that the sun needs and say, this is how it's going down. It ain't like that no more. That season of people's lives is over. This is where your balance comes in. You don't have to defend yourself. You just tell people how it is. Do you understand what I'm saying? To be a defensive person and live in defense is a hard thing. That's what quarterbackers do or somebody, defense liners, and they get paid for that, don't they? So before I even tell you about the Egyptians, where the symbol came from, I need to tell you what it takes to get to the infinite possibilities. Sometimes your process throughout your life was getting you to infinity. And some of us have dodged infinity because we were used to finite. Everything has to be packaged. And it's got to be packaged the way that we knew it to be. It's got to look a certain way. And it's got to be a certain way because that's what we knew it to be. We got to love a certain way because that's what we were taught it was supposed to be. So what if you were loving right? I mean, wrong. And what if love kept showing up to you wrong because you didn't want to take the chance of doing it different? That's happened so many times. But when the scales of balance come and you want balance and you want fair, you stand up for yourself, but you don't have to defend. This is justice. Justice says that I serve my part in peace. And if someone does not allow you to, then you back away. People have a habit of not listening again. And that's an unfortunate thing because they're used to people listening to them. That's fine. But I said in our leaders meeting yesterday, you have got to listen as well as hear. Listen and conversate. Sometimes don't say nothing. If it's not the right time, don't press the issue as if you're the only one that has problems. Be considerate enough to know that we all have problems. 
not living in the world alone. Because I don't look at the infinity sign just for me. That's why I'm sharing the, in, the information. I'm looking at it collectively. How do you get there? You stop being one-sided in your heart. You begin to think about people as you think of yourself. But you also begin to think about you and just you pull away from things and people that don't don't honor that kind of philosophy because it is very well possible that we don't speak the same language when we come out of a of, of a process. When you get a why in the fork of the road, your communication could be foreign. Your language it could be different now. And no one is going to realize that but you. In the process of life, people hurt when they have to make changes or when life comes and it's giving them shake up moments such as with Uranus and what it's done and what it continues to do. But I trust God before I trust anything and anyone else. It's not anything to put someone down. It is the truth because me and you will make mistakes. We may not be able to hold the bar up for everyone. The best that we can do is think consciously how we deal with one another because how can we become a changed society that is unifying for one another when we only think out of the sun? There's no balance there. You ain't getting no number eight there. The number eight, you know, infinite is about new beginnings. How do I practice more of that? So how do we do it? So we looked at these here signs and these symbols. And we also looked up here and we see on her head, the, the um, sun disc. You see, the incorporation of all of these here figures have to do with our astrology, your sun, your moon. Did you ignore your moon when you were younger? Of course you did. So you had no infinite possibilities because there's no congruency within your emotional abilities and your ego. The ego cannot submit to anything that it won't look at. This is why men have problem with women. And vice versa. Some women have been in domestic issues and they don't see anything really but their emotions. They don't see the sun. Everything is dark. And there's men. I just want to explain it so we can get this here because this is where balance is needed. Men are brought up and they see the sun because this is the masculine aspect of who they are. Women are in this here uh um, place, but they, they don't understand because they've been born a, a sun sign under any sign. This is not just about Leo. I'm a Capricorn sun. My ego was prevalent. Then I had to come over here and start working on my moon. Who knew it but God, because no one taught it to me. And so when I did, I had to realize the emotions were out of control. And this is where the Bible says that the storms were raging. I had to bring balance in the storms within me. Just like there was a balance needed in the ego, the sun. And some people have to go further because they have to balance the sun within them and recognize that it's ego and they don't know it. This is something that we can know from our own experience of, of working out of our egos, the sun. So after you've come into a place where you did some time, you see that there's an infinite symbol presented to you. Why? There is marriage within the individual. I don't really think that there's a marriage that is solid until you can come into this place congruent for yourself. I really don't. The reason why is because the truth of who you are and your ability to just be free and say, this is it. I, I don't, listen, I, 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 hey, I, I have nothing. I, I've lost everything. What else do you want? 
And if you want anything else, I'm done. I, I'm not giving it. Why? Because I saved it for me. I gave you everything, everybody all over the world. And now it's about me. It's not about being cynical, but after you've went all around the world and you've given out, and don't tell me that you gave when you didn't. I want you to examine yourself. I want you to be selfless because I am 55 and I'm going to be 56. I was 20, I was 30, and I was 40. I was selfish, I was into myself, I was releasing, and I let go. Then I gave, and I gave. You see, there's processes to life. And a lot of people have different, they got different um, stairways and roads and paths, but I heard that the path was narrow. And many of us have been looking at a broad path. I, I don't see it to be broad. I see everything that I read in the Bible pretty much that you got to lose everything to gain. And I do see a lot of people that don't recognize that. I see a world that says that you can do anything that you want, but they don't tell you about the price that you have to pay. The price is infinite. Now that's not something that I'm saying for people to feel bad about because I don't owe anybody anything but myself and the universe. I am not selfish where I believe anybody owes me anything. I have went through seeming losses. Anything that I receive now is because I have put out in the universe in an abundant way. I deserve infinite wealth, infinite health, infinite blessings, infinite prosperity. I would keep doing it the way that I do it right now from the heart, giving because I know that my giving is a work for me. That is infinity. Working infinitely, but working finite, that is not going to profit us. This is the way you begin to change it. When you learn what is infinite, the possibilities of anything that you want, but the infinite aspect of who you are is calling you into beingness to say, I choose to use you rather than use me. The world full of slavery has taught us to work our bodies. And the infinite possibilities of life is saying that everything that you have, you want and desire now, I have brought you to a crossroad. You can end that slavery and all that you have been doing with your hands laboring and really take on the understanding of what it is to be yoked in the spirit. Infinite possibilities are not something that many people actually believe in. Even though the person that is so spiritually inclined does not believe that God will bless, Ed Abu Shatta will bless them the way that they have told others. But when you come to the place where you have met with Christ and he saved your life, truly saved you, you didn't have anything saved but you then infinity begins to be the only thing that you can pull on, infinite, because you have nothing else. You know that no one around you and all that you've been a part of, they really don't understand who you are. I wanna paint this picture very clear because when you look at wheat and tares, there's only a message for the wheat and one for the tares. And you gotta accept it. You can go into your workplace and say that I believe in spirit and they may say I do too, but there, there's going to be a difference in your spiritual beliefs. You better get with people that believe like you. Why? Because the wheat and the 
tears, the conquerors and the conquerees. If you stay in the cycle of where they have been mingled together and there's a separation, you could be lost in it all because you may still believe that you're a part of the finite. This is some deep stuff. So please make a donation tonight. I have not even began to read. I am talking to you from within. Because I'm telling you before I tell you, the symbol was made, but I'm telling you why it was made. This symbol actually endorses healing. This symbol is about the symbol of the pharmaceutical um, aspect. This symbol also talks about the archangel Raphael. When you go in, this symbol does not just look like a number eight. It begins to coil around each chakra within your body. It's not that I read it. It's because I've seen it within myself. I just talked about the vagus nerve last week. And with the vagus nerve, even right here in his shoulders, this, this bird, Horus, that nerve has the aspects of the serpent going up into this area of the head. Now, once I started researching the vagus nerve, what I can tell you is, is that for 10 years, I had the shoulder problem over here. And I said last week it shifted. No, two weeks ago it shifted. Over the weekend, Friday, I found I had no more pain. Now, when you come into that part, you see it could be a part of your brain that is operating with a limitation. The whole part of the brain, the whole proximity of the brain may not be working. That means that burdens could be on one side of you and your body is off weight because of the imbalance and there is no harmony, only chaos. It wasn't just that I took myself out of chaos. It was that it was time for me to come out because I had learned the lesson. It wasn't just that the infinite sign came up because I seen it. It came up and it began to synchronize to show me that there is infinity working. Do not worry about the finite. I know I want to say to people tonight that when you have, as a human being, when you've been disappointed, what I'm saying could leave some doubt in your mind. I am not a fool. But I prefer to believe in what I believe in rather than believe in what was seeded into me by others. I want to say it again. I believe in the infinite. And so I'm pulling that tonight, even in this energy of 1111. I pull on the possibilities of wealth, transfer, the possibilities of healing, the possibilities of unconditional love, love that flows like rivers, love that never, never ends because that's who I came here to be. If I could give that to others and let you know that it's possible, that's what I want, because I believe that unconditional love is possible, but I believe that it comes with acceptance. What? Acceptance that you were meant to walk the road that you chose. You are co-creators. Therefore, all is well, and the infinite is speaking on our behalf, but you got to make a decision. It's a master on both sides. You got it. You only can serve one. And that leaves you in a place of vulnerability. Because you want to be who you were created to be. You don't want to be what others are created to be and who they are. They don't 
even know the truth. Every day they get up and worship mammon. So where could your possibilities be if you worship mammon? It's painful to let go of who you've been. But I think it's more, more than worth it to step over into infinite possibilities of what you've never seen or known before. What you thought it could be, but you haven't experienced. It's worth it to me because I've seen and done all of this back here. I've been all of this back here, but I haven't been who I am right now expressing the love that I have for others. And you know what? It's okay. It's okay if someone or no one expressed back to me what I'm expressing now. This is who I was created to be. This is what I was created to do and to give. And if I said the possibilities are great because I am a wealth promoter, infinity working through me will break the power of the egos that try to sustain their lives in this world that is not going to keep them or save them. Your soul has no life in this world. They are not created to help you. Your master is who you choose. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. What you say, it is so. So the Egyptians, it says, um, it is first recorded that the first Uraeus was created by the goddess Isis who formed it from the dusk of the earth and the spittle of then current sun deity. You see, um, this information takes us back to our roots and our roots take us back to infinite possibilities. When you look at the Egyptians and the power that they had at that time, it's not to say that we don't have it. We have been um, immersed in others' idea of life. And so that's what we've used. We've seen that others' um, idea of life has come to an end for us. It's not working. Some people are still depending on others. This is where the choice is. This is where even in the Bible, Jesus said that you're either in this world, you're not, no, I'm of this world, but not of it. I'm in this world, but not of it. You, you, you figure that one out. And then he came to a place where he said he owed nothing to this world what he was given because all of his life was about coming here to make changes and right wrongs. So we can't lose sight of what's really happening to us. So the Uraeus was formed out of the dust of the earth. And that is the, um, the infinity sign. It's the snake. It, you know, it brings you back to, um, the thought of Moses having the staff and how it became a snake. And all of this has to do with the rising of the Kundalini. It is said that the Uraeus was used by Isis to take the throne of Egypt for o Osiris. Now, Osiris is actually um, a star, um, but she did it for Osiris. She took the throne. And in here we find that there's a very important statement that is owed to a female. And see, the, the weights and balance for us were, um, has been out of kilter. We don't have balance because we didn't know the power that the, the moon actually brought. And she represented the moon. 
we are understanding that more even as we talk about the Bible, but why the Bible did not tell you that the sun, I mean, the moon um, was the chaotic aspect. It didn't tell you, you had to figure that out for yourself, darkness, light. You see, it didn't say that the moon was the energy or the time that was going on in that era for a time that it was nothing but darkness. Um, it, it said it was nothing but darkness. How long it brought the darkness? The moon. People looked at the moon as if the moon was a bad thing. And that's why um, we had no knowledge of it. What does the moon do? It brings in the wishes, well and ill-willed. How is that? Because of the power and the energy of the moon. Do you know how much energy there is when you cry? If you cried with joy and happiness and you set up under the moon, the power it would bring and the manifestations, because the manifestation of your life comes through the tides coming in like today, everything we're teaching. We're teaching under infinity. We're teaching why? Because we want to break the yoke of finite ignorance. You know, I don't want to circle around my head no more. I want to be like the lady that's rubbing um the lion on the um the tarot card and she got it over here. I mean, when you know, when this infinity uh stuff start coming in, I start seeing uh so many. Um, that sign, I'm like, let me go into the tarot and look at all of them then, the magician. You see, my mind is just clicking, you know, and I don't do the tarot. That's, you know, Prophetess Kamoy. What I do is um, I, I get those visions and, you know, the thinker is starting to work with me and it's showing me all these different things. So yeah, I, hey, hey, little courage lion. I got courage. So now I can walk. I can walk with a lion. You see what I'm saying? And, and it's out of the infinite balance because I ain't afraid no more. I didn't lost it all. I ain't got nothing. Hey, thank you very much. Although I have everything that I need and more because now I can recreate my life because I know who I am. I'm the magician. You know, I got the power. I got the power to tread down. I got the power to create with my mouth, my thoughts. I believe in me. Why? Because I overcame death. When you lose something, it's painful. A child, you know, you might've had a repossession. That's just halfway because now you're talking about finite again, but a repossession means I can know where my heart is. See, I can't replace a child if I lost a child, but I can replace a car. I can get a budget in order, you see? I can change my mind, you see? And that's where the power of infinity comes from because no longer do I have a finite block of thinking. I'm not like Charlie Brown, the blockhead. I am now unlimited in my thinking. I let go of yesterday and who I was unmanifesting and I receive who I am today manifesting. I get to look at the number eight properly and I get to see that every day is a new beginning. You see, it's a new beginning because there's endless possibilities. They laugh over even, you know, a person that gets married my son got married on Saturday. And, you know, before I was thinking about writing in the ring and all of that, the, the ring is a symbol, of, a symbol of infinity. It's endless. You cannot break the circle. That's only one half. Now, when you put both the male and the female ring together, what you have right here, you got infinity. Unified. 
But as long as I think that the ring is over here on his hand and it's on mine and that's just all it is, then I don't have a yoking together. I'm not tied because marriage is about being tied together. Everything that you do is unified and a unity brings you into infinite possibilities because baby, if you think in unison with those you work with and you are a team player, if you think in unison with those that you live with in your house and it's a team cooperation, you're gonna win. You're gonna win. And if you work with people in that mindset, the possibilities are endless. Because everyone that is in those circles that are knitted together, they're not left out. The possibilities are there because they're in the frequency and the energy of receiving. And guess what? Let me just put this in there. That frequency is not going to permit an imbalance. You know why? Number one, ISIS created it out of the dust of the earth. We're not going back and the snake is uh, telling Eve, you can do it like this. No, infinite possibilities mean that we're doing it together like this. We're stepping together because we see Libra is the sign of balance. You know, if Libra continues to sweep things under the, the rug and they don't take care of the business right here at hand concerning what is not appropriate and what is appropriate, you have imbalance, chaos again, chaos. You're back here starting over again. So just because you say it doesn't mean that it's so. You got to put action with it. This is always going to be. The, the key is, does the sun and the moon balance it out? How do you know it? Because you know when you go and make a bill, if you can pay it, straight up imbalance, take it further. You know that if you hate someone, it's imbalance. Get your thoughts together, balance it out, and love. Why? Because your ability to love beyond hate is your challenge. When it comes to love, love is key. Pure love, no matter what people do to you. Your heart remaining open and becoming more loving is the key because that's where your open door of manifestations come. You've been tried for a season. And the season has either, either proven you to be promoted or to be demoted. The problem is here with spiritual promotions and spiritual demotions is, is that most people get up and think that they're only in the 3D. They're only on the physical level. I want to tell us that we're not. I don't care what you do in life. The principles of the universe work for us all, whether you believe in God or not. That means that whatever a man sows, he reaps, even if you don't acknowledge that you sowed it, good or bad. Balance, infinite, consciousness. How do you get it? You can't say that you're going to do something without actively becoming it. Actively becoming it, that you are participating in your own life by doing what you say every day. You don't just get up and brush your teeth, you take the bath. If you stop smoking, then you're going to have to put action behind it, which means resist. If you're a sexaholic, resist. How? If you need therapy, then you actively go get therapy. You do what it takes and you meditate. This is how you overcome yourself. Yourself is your ego. Should I show you this again? How many people have lived in the sun and not lived in the sun and the moon? As it is in heaven, so it is in earth. You cannot pray, I bind in, in heaven and I bind it in earth without knowing the sun and the moon or knowing that the sun and the moon is inside of you 
and it is above you. All of this is infinite information. Because infinity says that when you start meditating, the blocks have to be broken. The chakras are no more blocked after you start working. You know, like if you're having sexual addiction issues, you're going to focus on that root chakra. And you can go to the therapist too, but if you focus on that root chakra, order is gonna come there. If you focus and you begin to meditate, you can chant as well. If you're having heart issues and you fo focus on your heart, you see that green emerald, healing will come to a broken heart. You know, a lot of times, yes, we're going to go and we can have therapy, we can get coaches, which is what we all do. On this line, we do coaching sessions, we do personal development because we understand the weight of the world. But the weight of the world is released from each and every one of us when we take action to do the inner work. Now, I don't wanna just throw inner work at you. I wanna say that we are collaborating on that because we know that the energy of spirit comes from within. It's not outside. We've been brainwashed to believe in external things. That's why the infinite possibilities have not worked in our lives. Success on an infinite level is necessary. We cannot trust the people that lead us. We need infinite. The infinite comes through the power within us. I'm birthing. Am I birthing a baby? I'm birthing possibilities. Wake up to who you are. Infinity says that there's no limits again. There's no limits. When I break the old belief system, the pattern of my belief system said that I didn't even know about the moon. I knew it was in the sky, but I didn't know that it, it was inside of me and what it brought out of me. Now that I know I can tell others, that's not just for me, that's for those that I train as well. Your emotions have been in bondage. Trauma, molestation, hurt, pain, disappointment, marriages, failed divorces. You can't manifest infinite without releasing that hurt. Today, 11 11. The possibilities are there for you. They're for you and they're for me. They're in our past, by the way. What you don't know about your past, you must research and find. Why? Because your past is the key to your present moment and your future. We had great leaders in 64 when I was born, Malcolm X was marching. Some of the other people that were marching, see, I bring that into the infinite idea of liberation because I do not have to be a slave to anyone, neither do you. Now, I'm not saying that you go and quit your job, you make a plan to understand what infinite can do for you. Because infinity, is the possibilities of the people such as we. If you are living and breathing, possibilities of life are great for you. You can doubt it or you can believe it. You see, I'm crazy enough to believe because I've seen my belief system change my life. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you fear nothing because fear is what will trip you up and take you back to your past. You focus your eye on the prize and believe. And if you can't believe by yourself, then you get around believers. And I brought Malcolm X up. Because it's not just that he was focused on color, but he was focused on a color of people that needed wisdom and understanding. 
Wisdom and understanding takes you back into your past with the forefathers. And some of us here did not understand our forefathers. We weren't even taught about them, not even in the school system. I'm going somewhere. Because as long as you're limit, limited or limited in an infinite world or a, a finite world, I'm sorry, your infinity, your, 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 your infinite possibilities will, will not be able to come because your belief system is wrapped up on what people have shown you and taught you. you the cycle has to break. It cannot stay the same. You can't the same. You can't walk the same. You can't talk the same. Listen, you can't even get up in the morning the same. Because it takes change for you to embrace infinite living. And we're going there. We're there in that energy. Even today, I said 1111. New beginnings, eight, double numbers. 11 is a master number. You can't have it though if you're not working for mastery. You can work for mastery or disastery. You got to choose. This is what we have before us. We also have the ability to support and pillar each other. Compassionately. You know, I had a young lady that uh, and she posted yesterday and she said that we got together because it's a struggle. It's been a struggle, but people are waking up and feeling it now. You see, the struggle wasn't real when you was asleep. The struggle has ever been going on. The struggle is not ended. The struggle has not ended. You can end it. I can end it. There's no struggle in infinite belief. Your belief system of limitations, even what we've been taught from others, a lot, a lot of changes. I wouldn't even say that it was wrong 10 years ago, what we thought, taught, and believed. There is a shift in consciousness. People are lost. Why are they lost? Because they saw it one way and it is not coming to pass that way. It's because spirit is saying, it's only me. Whatever you receive at this point in time is going to be through prayer. It's going to be through your relationship with me. Not, I, I'm just telling you. In another month, you, you ain't accepted it. You will. Because as the young lady said, the struggle, the struggle convinces you. I'm convinced. You know, I, I, I'm sustained. So infinite possibilities, how do you get them? You take the shackles off as Mary Mary them song. You have to take them off and begin to speak to yourself and tell yourself that I am not bound to anything. If I made a commitment, I'm bound. Remember that though. You can't get uncommitted to anything unless you break the, the contract. And if it's a soul contract, that's something you gotta go through with you and God and that person. Infinity came from the antiquity of Egypt with our people. And this information is coming back to us right now. So from Horus, the cobra symbolizes a spiritual connection between the royal pharaohs and the gods. Even the deity Horus and Set were depicted wearing the uraeus on their crowns. Now, I'm going to end, I wanna clear this up and we'll come back here next week, Wednesday, because we have this energy, we're going through it. Gemini moon is on the 31st. This is a clearing season and we're wrapping up things for the new. What is the new? Saturn and Aquarius. Aquarian energy is already with us. That's why we're like, I want to break out. I want to get free. We're feeling Uranus saying, I don't care. Tower moments now. Down, break through. Now, how does that go along with the infinite sign? Because you can't get a breakthrough until you get a breakdown. So welcome breakdown. Welcome breakdown, but learn 
what you need to learn and break down. Because when you learn what you need to learn in the breakdown, <laughs> your breakthrough is right at the door. Learn that it's possibly that you need patience to work through some of this stuff to get to the infinite possibilities because you have been working on the level of finite. Finite is a rock, it's immovable. So the cobra symbolizes the spiritual connection between the royal pharaohs and the gods. Even the deities Horus and Set were depicted wearing Uraeus on their crowns. Now this is a snake that everyone has taught was a bad thing, right? But when you look at the Egyptians and even with Venus having um, that time where she went into the underworld in June, she went down for a reason. She went down because whenever you go down, there's a value of something that you need to get out of, and that's hell. It could be, uh, I feel like it's mental hell. You got to go down. There's an understanding of, you know, uh, losses. You experience the dark night of the soul. But anyway, in that, she had to go down for a reason, and she does it periodically. We know that in astrology. Venus is... Um, the archetype of Isis um, on an astrological uh, level. And so she went down and she was there in the underworld for like three weeks. She went to get her sister. I don't want to tell the story. But in that time, um, were parts of her crown that were coming up as a sign. And the sun disc that sits inside of her crown that was showing signs. The outer casing of the sun disc is the cow's horn, which is a symbol for Taurus. The sun disc itself has to do with rock, the sun god. So she's wearing all of this on her headdress, with, which actually came from the goddess Hathor. What does all of this mean? The headdress was created as a sign of who she was, who many women do not know. And this is not about women's liberation where we're taking over the world. This is edifying the moon energy in our lives because women had power just as men. And when you bring the woman and the power of the man together, which is a unity within one person first, I said, you have a powerful thing. You're teaching people how to be unified within themselves. The chaos has ended and now there is peace. You understand how to regulate peace within yourself. You can have a healthy relationship wherever you go because you understand peace. Then in the front of the crown that she wore, the Uraeus was there, which is that part that we've talked about where the snake actually became the infinite sign. So Venus was the archetype that would bring the energy of balance and harmony and the new beginnings but also the infinite possibilities. When I go in teaching at a deeper level, we find that you as an initiate spiritually cannot go in beyond Venus. She is the gatekeeper. All right, did Kamoy come on? I don't see her. Okay. So maybe she wasn't able to come on because she has some things to um, add. She may have been on and talked too long. But if anybody needs any help or guidance, direction, of course, our email address is ifwbuilders at gmail.com. Um, we'll be back on at six o'clock next Wednesday to go further into this information and look at 
um, the energies. Look at the timing. Also, if you need a natal chart, you can email us about that because we do natal charts. Um, we have been doing the trances on Uranus. And the reason why uh, is because number one, we're going into Uranus energy wholeheartedly in December, but we've been feeling it, which is very much um, connected with the, the um, the pandemic, you know, when it started, and then also um, um, Pisces energy, Neptune was there, you know, at the end of February into um, March. So, um, any closing remarks, ladies? <clears throat> I had a question. Okay. We were talking about. Um the sun and the moon and you said something I think um have you been in your ego and forgot about the moon is it possible to have been doing the reverse like being so much in your emotions well I guess not because ego always shows its ugly face but I know that sometimes like for me when I could have outwardly projected my ego, I, in the past, I would just hold it in. Do you get what I'm saying? And just be in my emotions. Yes. So what happens is, um, in, in, the, in reference to your question is, yes, there's a part of your nurturer there, but the ego is going to be more predominant simply because that's who you know yourself to be. You hadn't come in contact with your spirituality yet. Okay. So your ego is going to show up more because that's for cancer information. Um, okay. Our nurturers, but the ego is going to show up until they get the balance of that nurturer completely. Now, some cancer um, individuals will need to work on the masculine and the feminine. Um, and that's because cancer is a feminine sign. So even if it's a man, mm -hmm. they may come out of the ego, but see, they're going to have an adaptability with it being fourth house because there's more of a nurturer in them than um, the, the, the male aspect, which says that they're going to have to bring uh, the balance wherever there's an imbalance. Now, you can find that in passive aggressive individuals. A passive aggressive person will not want to hurt people. Therefore, the ego is still predominant because even with shame and shyness, mm. that is ego. That was yeah. Me. yeah. Shy, shy, mm -hmm. and shame. Okay. All right. And, and and I mean, here in this time, where is your infinity? You are working to reshape the infinite possibilities of you letting go of other people's expectation of what you should say and what you shouldn't. Now, people that are born with the North Node, like me, um, we have Mercury, you and I have predominant Mercury. Um, we're working to actually speak our peace. Um, there was something about the time that we were born, we came here to learn how to balance out communication. Why? That's what we signed up for. Right. So right. Um, the passive aggressive individual usually is not going to tell you exactly how they feel because they don't want to hurt other people. Even these um, individuals that have communication issues such as myself, because I can be an aggressive person, I know and I modify my engagement with people to keep from hurting them because for some reason or another, they want to say that I hurt their feelings, but they see where they hurt mine. Yeah. yeah. So I've always been um, in a position when I started learning spiritually to be mindful of others because there was a strength that was more profound in me. Now, I'm not giving that to myself, but I'm just going to say, why is it okay for you to hurt me, but I not speak up and, and say what needs to be said to you? But I found that as I'm growing spiritually, I want to give peace. I don't want to hurt you. Yeah. So yeah. I acknowledge that you feel that way, but you cannot shut up. Right. You can't even get me to realize that I'm not adequate in my speech. 
you may not be on the level that I am speaking. And that's not to put anybody down. It's just that you got to know who you are and where you are, because if you don't, other people will stifle you and they will put you out of where you should be, meaning that I'm a great speaker. I'm a great teacher. I don't care what people are saying in the background because I paid the price to say and speak what I do. I didn't get my wisdom from books. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not an intellectual person per se. Whenever I teach, I am going to go from the beginning to the end. I'm an alpha and omega teacher. Yeah. I need to prove to you what you do not understand. That means along with the part that God has given me to give to others, I'm going to go the long run and begin to present to you from the beginning of time. There was nothing but darkness. And yes, we read it in the Bible, but we get to the place where we need more evidence, right, people? Mm -hmm. The darkness that we don't see. The moon. The importance of the moon. What we have not been taught. Why? Because it unlocks secrets that we should know for our infinite wealth. Yes. for our wealth. So when you collaborate with people that do not understand your language, and I'm not telling you to cut off those that don't understand your language, I'm simply saying be strong enough to understand that you're not going to be able to get your opinion across to them because you see, the world believes one way and spiritual people believe another. Yeah. And many people believe that they're spiritual. That's fine. We're all flowing in an increment of level in time. I respect you. Infinity tells me that I respect you and you will respect me. Yeah. I'm not going to make you, but I will live in the cohabitation of what makes me happy, which means that I'm not living in Doubtsville. I live in Blessed Assurityville. Yeah. It's so interesting you say that because um, that was something that I learned um, last year around the time I was purchasing my house is I um, stopped arguing or even conversing with people who didn't understand where I was speaking from or and and. I became so unapologetic about it and it may not have been uh, nice, but at the time that's all I knew how to express myself because I was just waking up. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I stopped trying to get people to understand me. It, it just is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and it's funny, you also mentioned that you're not an intellectual, but you know a lot of things. I, er, a couple of hours ago, I was um, planning some of my Instagram posts and I was led to talk about like teachers and, and just giving thank to the, thanks to the teachers who have taught me. Um, and one of the things that I said that will be posted at some point this week was, um, you know, some people gain qualifications and then other people are called, which then makes them qualified. So when you said that, it kind of made me think of that because I'm not intellectual either. <laughs> like, you know, I just know based off of my own experiences, which it happens to be my truth. And so anyway, I appreciate the class. This was, this was awesome. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm glad to have everyone here. Um, if there's anyone out there that wants to come on and be a part um, right here on Zoom where you can give your opinion, then email us at ifwbuilders at gmail.com. Some of the classes cost. I did ask for a donation um, 
and um, sometimes I do free classes. Um, last month, I did a lot of free classes. Also, you can go to www.wealthyliving.org, and we have personal development sessions. Also, you can sign up to be an executive coach or a personal uh, life coach okay and um, that's where it begins with us everyone on here has been certified except for maybe miss valerie um she could be if she comes on enough but anyway i thank you guys for um being a part definitely um you do me a wealth of service not because you agree with me because we have disagreements in our community as we do our meetings every tuesday for our coaching uh meetings but it is iron sharpening iron. It's also looking at the forefront of knowing that we are all supported because we're here for each other. Um, we're in a, you know, we're going through a time where um, there's a lot of darkness. Uh, and you don't have to see the darkness alone when you have people that actually understand you. Um, also, when you are creating leaders, you know, because there's a lot of us that and leading that will not be around forever. Uh, that means that we have to, to create and duplicate. That means that it's time out for jealousy and in, envy and everything that we talked about concerning infinity. Infinity does not incorporate jealousy and envy. Haterism, it does not. You know, begin to use your intuitive compass gauge where you are in life, how you feel about yourself, begin to tell the truth about what you feel, whether it's good or bad. And when you tell yourself the truth, you know that you are hating on somebody. You will get the freedom to begin to love yourself and others because the reason why we hate or we're jealous of each other is because we feel inadequate. Yeah. Inadequacy will not get infinite possibilities because inadequacy comes from finite information that someone has given us that is not truly acceptable to you and I. Frustrations that people have right now is because they're not doing what they really wanna do. They're not happy with themselves. They're doing what people expect them to do, not what they want. It's a time when you come in your, into your life, your true life, and you say, I spent time doing it for others. I feel good about that. I gave to others, but I got to do it for me now. That's authenticity. It's true. It's not about being begrudging or harboring, but to thine own self be true, Socrates said. Or either it was Aristotle because they don't really know, but I know that that's been my that's been my word, my word since I was about seven or eight years old. When when are you gonna be true to thyself and know thyself? Know thyself. He said, "Know thyself above all things. Know thyself." And when you know yourself, you will do better. And some people might say, "Well, I do know, know myself." Do you know yourself because you have a job to go to every morning? Because you have a house to live in? Does all of that define who you are, your material world? Because what would happen if your material world dissipated? Who would you be then? You see, know thyself. Know thyself. And that's the end of what I have to say today. Thank you. Um Kim. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to let you know that it was very, very interesting. Um, I have a lot of catching up to do, but mm -hmm. I want to learn more and more and more. All and right. uh, next time I'm going to question you about us Aries. People. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> I, need, I need to know more about my sign. I do. Your sign. Yeah. 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 
I thought I sent you information on um your sign. No, um, you were going to, but I never, I don't remember ever getting it. Yeah, I sent it to you. Um, you did? Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. It's been a while ago, though. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I need, I need to know more about it. All right. It, it does, um, it profitous, um, it profits us to, it profits us to, to know, um, because it helps us to get things in order. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Um, especially under the moon. Uh-huh. Oh, it's oh really. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So and we're under the moon right now. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's an eleven eleven um uh, moon. Um, let's see, the fourteenth will be the Scorpio moon. So, you know, people probably will begin to feel heavier and more um emotional because Scorpio is you know, is taking us deeper um, to find uh, information and, and cues and clues about what we need to do with um, information that's not conducive to our growth. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Um, it, it's probably the information is probably in your email. If not, send it to me again and I'll redo a chart for you. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. All right, okay. so you guys have a good evening. You and, too, Kim. Um, thank, thank you so you much. Too. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Biden can do right now because he's not he's not the president. He is the president elect. So it's nothing he can do right now. He just gotta sit back and wait. Yeah, he do. To uh, get uh, Donald Trump. Who? Who gonna get Donald Trump? Military. The maker? Military. Oh, the military. Oh, yeah, I heard something about that. Oh, they're ready to escort his ass out that White House. I know that. on somewhere but don't nobody want to be bothered with you no more
this morning. Father, to salute the troops after he stood up and said what he said about the military. He had the nerve enough to show up there this morning. And then it's funny. What's honey? Because Timothy, he is a narcissist. I keep telling you that. And if I look up the word and tell you what it means, you still ain't gonna understand. The man don't care nothing about nobody but himself. Yes. He don't care about nobody but himself. I don't even have, I don't even, to be honest with y'all, I don't even know how he got married. Mm -hmm. I wonder what that's really about. Is that, the, is that just to have some food on the side or what? What yeah. is that about? Yeah. That's all, that's all that's about. Mm -hmm. He ain't in love with nobody. He in love with himself. That's who he in love with. I think the uh, even Byron is a good one. Yeah. Everybody knows about it now. Everybody knows about it. That's why they want him out that damn White House. Because he ain't been doing nothing but lying to people and, 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 and uh, pretending. I guess he thought in his mind by him showing up this morning at the um at the vet. At the at the uh, veterans memorial, that he was doing something. I don't give a shit if he showed up or not. Really? All I know is I was so fancy Biden and his wife, and they were just smiling and. You know, acting accordingly. Donald Trump was standing up there looking like a mean gorilla. <laughs> That's what he, I, I'm not lying to you. Yeah, That's yeah. what he was standing up there looking like. Yeah. Now, how are you going to come to something like that and stand up and look like that? Mm -hmm. Crazy. That man is insane. He ain't got no feet. He's out of his mind. I figured that gonna happen. Oh yeah, he he just uh, he just showing out. He think he's doing something. Ain't nobody giving a shit about him. What he doing? I don't think I cooked enough cabbage. But we'll make do for now. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 